Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel, from John twelve thirteen. Hosanna. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Today is Palm Sunday. Today is April the 2nd. And next Sunday is Easter Sunday. So this is the beginning of Holy Week. By this we know love because Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. So this is the beginning of Holy Week. And uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes and read about the triumphal entry. You can see the sunlight coming in through my kitchen window. This is my kitchen window and can I get an amen? <laughs> oh look, look what, I, look what I get to look at every day when I wash dishes. Pray it forward, grateful, and can I get an amen? So, using the sunlight from the kitchen window, let's read about the sun, S-O-N, from the S-U-N. The triumphal entry. I don't know if I can actually see it because of the sun. I wanted to have some sunlight, but now let me see if I can actually look at it. This is from Matthew 21, the triumphal entry. Now, when they drew, new, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied to a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet. Right. Let's see. I know you can't read because the shadows. I'm, I, you can't follow along with me because the shadows on the paper from the sun. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. This is not the best situation here where every time I move, you have my shadow. See, I'm moving now. And here's my shadow. Um, maybe, okay. Actually, that might work. So let's try to go through this maybe um, one more time without the shadows. And let me kind of just meditate on it. So again, we're talking about the triumphal entry. Now, as you're looking at the words right here, I've got it kind of, I'm hovered over. I, I'm literally using my body to hover over the sunlight coming in. See, there's the sun. Yeah, I'm moving in. There we go. So you might see that better. That probably wasn't the best choice to be next to an open window, but I just enjoyed the sunlight. Now, as I was telling Stephen and AJ yesterday, I was an adult before I realized something very important. And um, I mean, I've been a Christian since I was a young, young child. But I had a, I had a serious misunderstanding about something in the scripture, um, and it wasn't brought to my attention until maybe five or six years ago. So, I mean, I was a well-seasoned Christian at that time, and so you are never too old to learn. 
You're never too old to continue to grow in your faith in Christ and to learn something from the scripture. Uh, in fact, as believers in Jesus Christ, we are called to continue to learn and to continue to study and to continue to uh, pursue our understanding of the scriptures. So now as a believer in Jesus Christ, I do believe that there is the second coming of Christ and it is inevitable. In fact, I believe that we are living in these end times that are talked about in the book of Revelation. I, I believe that we are truly in the end times. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole pre-trib and post-tribulation because there's a whole there's different schools of thought on the pre-tribulation return and the post-tribulation return. I'm not going to elaborate on that, but what I want to talk to you about is that, so I know that the Christ is coming again, and that's the second coming, but my whole entire life up until a few years ago, my understanding of the first coming of Christ was when he came to Bethlehem as a baby, and he was... Uh, made incarnate, um, that he was born um, to Mary and Joseph in the human form as baby Jesus in Bethlehem. And I always believed, to my understanding, that that was the first coming of Christ. Well, it has now come to my knowledge and understanding that, of, I mean, obviously he did come to the earth. He was incarnate, um, the Word made flesh. Um, John chapter 1 talks about in the beginning was the word and the word was God and that the word became flesh so but what's referred to as the first coming of Christ is really when he comes into the triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the donkey so that is the uh, actually the quote unquote first coming of Christ when he comes uh on what we call Palm Sunday. Okay, I was able to move my shadow a little bit. That reminds me of the psalmist says, and no shadow of turning of thee. Um, let's see, that song great from, from, not psalm, limitations, excuse me, not psalm, but limitations, where we get the song, great is thy faithfulness, and uh, talks about no shadow of turning, and that's in limitations. So, anyway so here's my shadow well I was showing you my shadow and so just talking about a shadow um, reminds me of limitations and there'll be no shadow um, and uh, from the song great is thy faithfulness see when you know the word of God simple things come to you like that when you know the word of God and at, now the psalmist I believe it's Psalm 127. No, I'm sorry. Psalm 119. That thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. And so when you know the word of God and it comes to you, then thing, little things like shadows can remind you of different things. But no. Uh, so biblically speaking, the first coming of Christ was the triumphal entry into Jerusalem when they were uh, slinging palm branches at him and uh, throwing down their outer garments and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. And so he was coming lowly, meek, and humble on a donkey, which significantly, uh, if you want to do a, uh, a study on this at some point, um, Mary and Joseph had a donkey on their way from Nazareth to Bethlehem when she was nine months pregnant, um, and they were having to make that journey from Nazareth to uh, Bethlehem, and she rode on a donkey um, and uh, when she was nine months pregnant carrying baby Jesus. So that's fascinating there. Um, a donkey is a very humble work animal. There's nothing noble about a donkey, nothing royal about a donkey. Uh, even the very poor, like Mary and Joseph, had donkeys. I mean, uh, they had to have at least one work or um, animal and some form of transportation. And so um, the most uh, common, of course, was the donkey, and it was the most humble. 
And so uh, they certainly didn't have stallions. Mary and Joseph did not have stallions to ride on and big white horses to ride on going um, into Bethlehem. So Jesus was making a statement when he was riding into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. Um, and he was riding on a colt that um, full of a donkey that had never been ridden. Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Okay, so he's calling himself lowly, lowly and sitting on a donkey. So it was a very humble entry for a king. Riding on a donkey was a very humble entry uh, into a city for a king. But, we know that with his second coming, the scriptures tell us in Revelation that he's coming back on a white horse. And there is a whole beautiful passage in Revelation talking about the second coming. So, that's basically what I wanted to share with you today with, with this being Palm Sunday. And I wanted to... Uh, elaborate on the fact that the first coming of Christ was the triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the donkey, but he's not coming back on a donkey, the second coming. And also, um, I put these decorations out here, um, as an illustrative point. Um, this is a cute little springy paint up wagon and I have, uh, some baby sheep. And I have a little, uh, actually this is a finger puppet. This little chicky here. I'm missing my finger. This is like a, look, that's a finger puppet. So Easter is, um, so many people want to associate Easter with, um, with the, uh, baby lambs and, and, uh, chickies. And of course the Easter bunny with springtime. And uh, we know that that all is from the pagan tradition. We know that uh, with the whole Easter eggs and Easter bunny. And I mean, I have these things just for illustrative purposes. And I, and I, and I think they're cute. I mean, I do think that uh, little uh, bunnies, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, those are lambs. Huh? Yeah. Well, these are lambs, but I told AJ not to vacuum. And... He is in his room vacuuming while I'm making a video. I told him not to do that. Um, I mean, he's supposed to vacuum, but not while his mother's making a video. So, anyway, yeah, these are lambs. And, then of course, uh, you, you have little bunnies and lambs and chickies that make you think about Easter. But these are um, obviously not the true and genuine meaning of Easter by no means. But John the Baptist did say, John the Baptist did say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away. So here's a little lamb. There's a little lamb. And John the Baptist did say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So, I am going to end on that note and um, AJ Howard I am going to uh, you think it's great come in here put your face in this camera and tell everybody that you photo bombed my video yes I turned the wonder thing on hi Anyway, I'm going to end on that note and wishing you a wonderful Palm Sunday and um, happy Holy Week and looking forward to the coming Easter.